Lisa, good evening again. You know, it's clear that this sick and twisted individual put a lot of thought and planning into this massacre. He bought a ticket to that show last night, walked into with the crowd like everybody else did, was able to then go out through an exit, keep the door open slightly. Police will still not say how he got out and back in, but this is what we're hearing. Went into his car, got on full body armor, fully armed, and then walked back in. Get us some Police had arrived shortly after the first calls came in to 911 at 1239 this morning. You could describe it as hundreds of calls coming in. A guy walks in dressed all in black, helmet, gas mask, black uh, armor. Moviegoers thought it was some kind of promotional gag, smoke and firecrackers for the Batman movie premiere. Yes, I thought that was a special effect. Nobody really knew what to think of it. And then he shot the ceiling, just straight up in the ceiling, and then everybody knew it was real at that point. Police say Holmes opened fire with a shotgun, then switched to an assault rifle and 40 caliber pistol. Gunfire lit up Theater 9 and the adjoining theater. Multiple objects just flow through the wall. I saw holes in the walls and everything. It was sheer terror and panic with everyone trying to duck and cover or head for the closest exit. Gun shells just, you know, falling on my head, burning my forehead. All I smelled was powder and it was just really terrifying. And I was telling my friends, I was like, just stay still. While it seemed like an eternity, it was over in rather a short period of time. Witnesses say Holmes just calmly walked out of the theater where he was quickly arrested. I need a marked car behind the theater stable side. Suspect in a gas mask. After his arrest, police searched his car, found another pistol. When he was questioned, he dropped another bombshell. Statements made by the subject himself, again, during his uh, initial arrest, uh, indicated that he had explosive material at his house. While police and fire and the bomb squad moved quickly to evacuate and secure the area around his apartment complex, victims are being rushed to six area hospitals where two died. More than a half dozen reported in critical condition. Well, I don't know how you could be prepared for such a thing, but I think the staff did an excellent job. Back at the theater, 10 people lay dead. Those who got out alive, still trying to come to grips with this nightmare. But when I was home, my mom was, of course, freaking out, and it was very traumatic. Traumatic indeed, and of course, the grieving process has just begun, and I should say, Lisa, that because so many people are searching for answers. The city of Aurora is, is opening up two high schools tomorrow, beginning at nine in the morning, to provide grief counseling and other feedback and help to those who need it. And we may not know the answers as to why he acted in such a long time. Of course, we questioned the chief earlier tonight, Chief Oates, Rob, and he said he just was not gonna answer some of those questions, wanted to save it for the courtroom for the prosecution of this case. Yeah, absolutely. I think that is the big key. You know, there's a lot of circumstantial evidence. We may try to piece some things together, but as you mentioned, the chief said, listen, we're going to get this uh, taken care of in the court of law, not in the court of public opinion. Reporting live from Aurora tonight, Rob Quirk, News 5. Thanks so much.